order. And Council Clevenger, would you start us out with the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Did everybody have a chance to look at the uh, minutes from the, uh, the May 28th meeting? If so, I would entertain a motion to uh, approve the minutes. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Goodman and seconded by Smith to approve the minutes. Those in favor, signify by raising your right hand, and it's unanimous. Thank you. Board of Public Works and Safety uh, minutes for May the 9th included for information only. Uh, well, that should be May 9th and 23rd, not May 7th. Oh, I see. I see. That's, a, that's an and. Okay, yeah. May 9th and the 23rd. Our, our, I, I want to apologize right now. Our clerk traders, I don't know what's happening, but there's been a, a lot of errors here just recently. <laughs> typos, typos, typos. I uh, know the typo that was caught earlier was not my typo. Oh, they, I see. Oh, well, we'll have to yes. the bus, so. <laughs> Never is. <laughs> oh, that's but I won't hook anybody under the bus. <laughs> you won't. Uh, <laughs> shit. That might have been my typo. <laughs> Just saying, yeah, might have been. Down to it. Might yeah. have been. Okay, uh, we don't have any. Well, do we have a communication? Was this letter? The, from that, the, I, yeah, that was the letter uh, from the class of 63. I just wanted to make Cindy sure. Cindy Hayes? Council, letter. Yes. Uh, just make sure the council had seen it um, for their own information. Board of Works took care of it. They, they took no action. So. That's good. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let it go. <laughs> Well, I, we, we, we turned her uh, back around to uh, Georgia over at the center to see what Georgia's input would be on this. Uh, for, the, for the record, the uh, class of uh, 1963 would like to put some kind of a plaque or something on memorializing the site where the senior center is right now as the former RHS high school which, yeah, I don't have any problem. Even though we didn't go there, Marty, you know, well, we, were, we were too young. We went to the study hall in Finland. I guess we walked across the street. We walked across the street. Yeah, we went to Lincoln Junior High. Yeah, the hospital. Which someday somebody <laughs> will come play there too. I'm sure you and I could do that. But anyway, I, I referred her to Georgia, and I don't know that they've had that meeting yet, but we'll probably hear something back after yeah, I'm sorry, it was just more, like I said, I don't know, didn't think there was any action, just we received it and passed it. I must apologize because I missed the meeting yesterday, but I sent an email to Georgia this morning and, and she didn't give anything back to me, so I don't know if they, I'll find out about this, I don't know if they talked about it or not. Did, did, did we mention it was time for your report yet? Did I miss that? <laughs> don't know if they talked about it. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's kind of rough in here. It is kind of rough. He's kind of rough in here. He started nice. I'm kind of amazed. Kind of rough. Okay. We have a uh, shot for typos. What uh, shot it? You, she, she left the room. She left the room. Okay. Well, we have no uh, public hearings tonight. Uh, we have no unfinished old business, uh, no new business except for ordinances and resolutions. Sam, did I just time? Okay. <coughs> ordinances and resolutions. Uh, we're looking at a resolution uh, 03 2019 dormant funds. Shada, you want to explain the dormant funds? That has to do with the uh, water department, right? No. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, the resolution is for uh, <clears throat> essentially over a period of two years, if we have any funds in our general ledger system that have become dormant, which means they're funds that we have no longer use for, haven't used them in two years, we haven't had any activity in them, State Board of Accounts recommends that we 
declare those as dormant funds, and if there are any cash balances left in those funds, then that cash balance needs to be transferred to either the general fund or the rainy day fund. <clears throat> or in this case, uh, we have the one grant fund. Uh, I've already spoke to the State Board of Accounts about this because I wanted to make sure that I followed proper procedure. And we had the Operation Pullover Grant had a negative balance in it from when we ended the program. So they recommended that uh, because I had fund balances with the city government, that we just transfer a cash balance out to make that balance zero, and then the rest of it we would just transfer. I'm recommending we put it into the rainy day fund and just transfer any remaining balance to rainy day and uh, increase that rainy day balance. So, and then we would declare the Operation Pullover Grant Fund, the LCC Grant Fund, City Building Debt Fund, and the Minnow Creek Assessment Fund all dormant, <coughs> and I would make those inactive funds transfer the balances, and they come off our books. <coughs> okay, so this is no longer used. This is a cleanup resolution. Correct. Yeah. And all of those are taxpayer funds, right? Mm, well, no. The so. only one, the only one that was actually a tax supported fund was the city building debt fund, and that was from a debt <clears throat> that uh, I paid off early in 2014. I recommended to the council to have that because we had enough cash balance, so we paid that debt off early. Um, some of you that were here will recall that, and therefore that left us with a, a sizable balance in that fund because we still were receiving. Based on the tax tax fund tax roll, we were still receiving a payment into that debt schedule for the rest of that year, uh, which gave us an extra, or I'm sorry, the next two years, and so that gave us a that twenty six thousand dollar balance. So the thousand dollars in the Minot Creek assessment fund is not taxpayer funded, right? No, that is was there, from the assessment done back in the Is there a fund the that, that can go into? Hmm? Is it, then is there a fund that can go into this not in tax? No, this one, that actually was a debt fund, but it was issued under an assessment with Minnow Creek back in the 70s. So that was a debt that we were paying to the county. Okay. Um, so this one, we would, uh, with the State Board of Accounts, the way all debt funds run is they would typically go into the rainy day or uh, general. The only other, uh, that particular one, um, we could transfer that to the Minnow Creek Maintenance Fund, that 994. Uh, we could take that one and put it into that maintenance fund as opposed to putting it in the rainy day. Would you happen to recall what the rainy day fund uh, balance would be if we did this? Uh, after the transfer, we would be, as of today, and we haven't paid out our final bill for the 4th Street project, uh, but as of today, it would take us up to about a $1.4 million balance, right around there. We're just shy of 1.4. Um, once we pay out the final payment for the 4th <coughs> Street project, that will take us down to <coughs> seven hundred thousand, seven eight hundred thousand, right around in there. Uh, will we be having some expense come out of that Minnow Creek uh, maintenance fund? So, oh, uh, possibly. If we do some cleanup work, we're getting some. Am I right, Lenny? We're getting some quotes on getting some cleanup uh, services come in to do some cleanups of logs and things like that. So there may be some coming out. We've got right now a balance, I think, and that fund is 22,000. Um, does not receive any revenue other than what's there. It's not something that is we receive any more revenue from because that was done when the county did the ditch assessment on Minnow Creek, again, back in the mid 70s. <coughs> that was all put into place and all the revenue unless they implement some kind of a, an additional assessment fee on that particular ditch, uh, there won't be any other additional revenues coming into that fund. Those revenues have been held in suspension for a very long time. We've mm -hmm. had maintenance on no Creek, but it has not been real expensive. And we're Correct. just, we're now at the point where we've got some trees and uh, <coughs> 
stumps and stuff in the in the area that need to be taken out. Yeah, yeah. we're working on that. I, you know, I it's six to one, half a dozen to another. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's why I, that's why I usually go with the rainy day fund because that's kind of our where we can put everything in. in the no problem. We're looking at uh, resolution 03-2019, <coughs> and we just just started some discussion about it. Um, okay, so, uh, do I do I have a motion for the reading of 03-2019? Uh, is there any more discussion? So moved. I have a. It's been moved for reading of 03-2019. Do I have a second? Second. Moved by Goodman. Second by Heidi. Those in favor of the reading? Those are okay, signify right now. Okay, it's so unanimous. Uh, okay, would you <coughs> ready to read the res resolution? Resolution 03 2019, a resolution to transfer dormant fund balance and dissolve dormant fund. Whereas the City of Rochester Common Council finds that the purposes for which the following funds were created are no longer in effect. Operation Pullover Grant balance negative $1,260.90. LCC grant balance fifty four dollars and forty two cents. City building debt fund balance twenty six thousand seven hundred ninety dollars and eighty four cents. Meadow Creek assessment fund balance nine hundred ninety four dollars and seven cents. And whereas those funds have been dormant for more than two years and the monies collected into this fund have not been appropriated, whereas the state board of accounts encourages dormant fund balances to be transferred for efficient money management. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Common Council of the City of Rochester directs the Clerk Treasurer to Section 1, declare the Operation Pullover Grant, L LCC Grant, City Building Debt Fund, and Minnow Creek Assessment Funds dormant. Section 2, transfer dormant fund balance as follows. $1,260.90 to Operation Pullover Grant Fund from City Building Debt Fund. $25,529.94 to Rainy Day Fund. Fund from City Building Debt Fund, $54.42 to Rainy Day Fund from LCC Grant Fund, $994.07 to Rainy Day Fund from Middle Creek Debt Fund. Section 3 of this, that this resolution shall be in full force and effect after its passage. Okay. Do I have a motion for approval of uh, Resolution 03-2019? So moved. Second. Moved by Smith, seconded by Goodman. Those in favor? And it's unanimous. Okay. Next on the uh, agenda is uh, an ordinance. This is 04 2019. It's the uh, sewer cap and video fees ordinance. And. Okay. I am going to recommend that we, uh, we postpone until Marcus can be here to explain in detail everything that this ordinance in, in, involves. Okay. It, it's quite, he's done quite a bit of research on it. And there's lots of uh, things to answer the questions to, so we'll just postpone. Okay, we'll go down to the department heads. Do you need a motion? Uh, yeah, we probably ought to have a motion. Um, the later in the meeting, you mean? No, no, no the next meeting. Next meeting. Okay. That's fine. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Party is <coughs> Our next regular second uh, board meeting. Moved by no. Smith, second by Cloninger to postpone. Those in favor? Oh, the resolution. Yeah. Thank you all. Yeah, we didn't anticipate his absence. He had an emergency in the OM. And Chief Butler, you made it, man. Uh, you had an emergency as well. And by the way, as he walks to the podium, let's wish him happy birthday tonight. Oh, 
Birthday. I figured I'd work the holiday and collect all the extra money, so oh, wait, I don't <laughs> I was just gonna tell you what a company man he was, and then he just blew it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it will reflect in my bonus at the end of the year. Yes, sir. Wait, that's twice as much as you got last year. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, no Appreciate that. No, it's good, long, good having you here tonight. Thank too. you. Thank you. Thank you. For the month of May, structure fires, one in the city, one in Richland Township. Mutual aid fires, one in the Henry Township, one in the Macy fire. We had an oven fire in Rochester Township. Grass fires, two in Rochester Township. Calls for smoke, two in the city. Auto fire alarms, two in the city. Gas leaks, one in the city, one in Rochester Township. Accidents, one in the city, four in Rochester Township. Medical assist, 21 in the city, seven in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. It's going to be hard to believe we actually had trees and power lines. So that was one in the city, four in Rochester Township. Uh, service calls, one in the city, canceled calls, five in the city for a total of 58 calls when we conducted one training drill. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. Thank you. Wait a minute. Say it. Wait a minute. How about a report on the truck firing? The, the cabin chassis, uh, the last time I spoke with our rep, will be completed the 17th of July. We'll go to Charlotte, and we will do a, uh, a pick list with, with, with the cabin chassis, and why probably within the next week after the 4th, they are going to start the body construction in South Haven at Spencer. So when the two of them meet, they'll, they'll be almost uh, ready to start working in the body and the tank and all that structure. Uh, once they arrive together, um, inspecting the final body work, then it goes to paint, all that's done up at South Haven. Uh, I plan on making several site visits. Uh, if anyone from the board would like to go up to South about a two hour drive uh, to see what this process is like and maybe it'll help appreciate the, the cost of this because it is, I mean, it's not like there's four pickup trucks going down the assembly line and they're all the same. This is a made by scratch to our spec truck. And it's pretty neat to see the, the <coughs> craftsmanship that goes into these things. So again, like I said, uh, once once I, I get dates, we're going to go up to visit. Uh, I'll, I'll get with Shada and she can shoot an email out. But if uh, someone from the, the council would like to go, it's, it's an interesting trip. Like I said it's a two hour drive, it's not too far. So we're welcome even on the weekends. Uh, Grant uh, Spencer, uh, the vice president, his dad owns it, but he's, he's, he's the working management of, of the company now, says because we're a volunteer accommodation department, he's willing to meet us up there on a Saturday morning so the volunteers can do it. So I mean, that's the kind of company we're dealing with because he wants everyone to have ownership in the, in the truck. So um, we're, we're getting close. Things are starting to come together. So right now in, in Charlotte, uh, it, it's on the line. I'm not sure where it's at in the line, but it's, it's, it's rolling down. So we're on schedule. Basically. Yes, very much so. Good. I appreciate it. To the best of my knowledge. Appreciate your keeping track of that, Tom. Yes, sir. Thank you much. Yep. Yeah. Chief Shots. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday, buddy. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday, buddy. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Chief. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. There were a total of 24 accidents. All of those were property damage. We issued 101 total warnings, 105 offenses, 60 case reports, 843 calls for service, 39 lockouts, 12 towed vehicles, and 38 people incarcerated. And then you have the list of crimes those individuals were lodged for. Warmer weather brings higher higher call volume for us. They're consistent if nothing else. They are though. I agree though. Especially when the weather warms up a little bit. Like I don't mind that. It's the freezing cold that I don't enjoy. It. Well, you can you can tell the uh, weather's warming up because we had one public. <laughs> New category. Yeah, it only, it only comes hey. out in the summer. <laughs> Marty's very sorry. Yeah, that, that's gonna go. Yeah. You guys, kind of figure out that's gonna go along with the intoxication also. <laughs> what was it? That that the oven fire castle. I'm safe there. Good my house. I don't think that's enough, and I don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, in other news, uh, Mayor Denton and I are going to meet with the school board on Friday. Uh, the board works approved us offering to assign a full time officer to the school as an SRO. Um, so we're going to meet with the school board July 8th and, and present that offer. Um, as you know, Skeeter has been an SRO. Um, and the way that the way that's done is that we just give him arrest hours by making him a reserve, but he's a school employee. Um, I, I've been getting less and less comfortable with, with that arrangement just because there could be a conflict of interest. And it's hard to be objective in a position like that when when he has to make decisions about his paychecks from school. Um, I understand his position, um, but I'm just getting less and less comfortable with it. I've reached out to the Indiana Association of School Resource Officers, um, and, and the overwhelming way it's done it is that a police agency assigns a full-time officer to the school. That is the re recommended way of doing it. Um, I've included some information on standards and best practices that the National SRO Association recommends. That's their method of doing it. So just to kind of clean things up, um, I recommend that we don't renew the MOU. Um, and, but we see the value of an SRO in school, obviously. So we don't want to take that away. So our alternative is to offer assigning an officer to the school. Um, we decided, Lieutenant Campbell and I sat down and, and had a conversation about all of our officers. Um, we feel that Officer Ed Ames would be a, a great fit for that role. Um, he's been involved in youth sports, uh, the church, uh, Sunday school. Uh, he's a, a foster family. Uh, he's a former uh, substitute teacher uh, for a year over at Valley and Akron. So we feel he'd be a really good fit for that role. So we took the initiative trying to be proactive with this and we've already sent him to SRO school. In order to be a, a school resource officer, you have to complete a 40-hour basic SRO course. Those courses are very limited uh, between now and the start of school. There's one in French Lake next month that he was unable to attend, and there's one in September. Well, that, that's going to be after the start of the school year. So we just want to be proactive when we send him to that. We're not trying to force our will or impose our will on anyone. We're just if our offer came to fruition, we had to be prepared. Those are the, the steps that we're going to be taking. Is it a 12-month position, or it's a it's a full-time position at the school Monday through Friday when they're on breaks and, and fall break, spring break, Christmas break. He'll come back to the road over the summer. He'll come back to the road work patrol um, because it obviously you have to get his 40 hours in just like anybody else. Um, what if what if they don't um, take us up on the offer? What are we, are we revoking the arrest powers? Well, we're, I'm, like I said, I'm, rec I'm recommending that we don't renew the MOU. So um, if they don't accept our offer, then that's totally their right. And they have that option. They'll just have to figure it out from there on there. And we can't really tell them what to do. It's their employee. Um, like I said, we, we just see, we see an efficiency there and we're just trying to make it better. Um, well, it isn't just the arrest powers, it's the investigating powers. Uh, and uh, to, we, we've had some, some issues where we believe that uh, the objectivity of a full-time police officer reporting to the governing body outside the institution they're operating in uh, keeps the lines of objectivity a lot clearer. There's a, there's a process you go through through an investigation, you have to take it from beginning to end. <coughs> Uh, we've reached out, had some discussions with other schools that have SROs. Uh, the Caston situation, the MOU there that the Sheriff's Department has put in place in Caston is uh, one of the best MOUs we have come across in reaching out to folks, and that is the deputy reports to the Sheriff. Uh, talked to North Miami a school board member, and they have a, an SRO, it's a female, SRO reports directly to the sheriff, and uh, they clearly feel that is a better situation than them reporting directly to the school. 
would our person uh, wear a uniform Absolutely. all day? Yep. yep. It'd be a police officer. Yep. It'd yep. be a police officer assigned to the school. We'd be in, in uniform. Um, we recognize, even with our current MOU, we recognize there are times that the soft uniform uh, would be more beneficial as far as khakis and a polo that identifies them as a police officer. But I think that's going to be few and far between. Uh, we want people to recognize them as a police officer, so they, they've got that good relationship starting in school at a very young age with the police department, so they know they, we are who you go to if you need help. I think about the uniform. One of the big things <clears throat> is if there, God forbid, there is an active shooter situation uh, and you've got a conservation officer or a, another officer of any kind, they're all trained to respond and go in to, for an active shooter. Well, you get the conservation officer running in and he sees somebody in the doctor's in a polo shirt with a clock, he's going to take them out. <laughs> you know, that, there's a strong possibility of that. So, you know, we, we feel it's important that that individual look like a police officer at all times. The other thing, too, is uh, I don't think it's a bad idea personally that students and staff get to know what a police officer is all about. Make that uh, you know, make that a presentable thing to folks, an approachable thing to folks. Uh, we have young folks all through the community who don't know how to approach a police officer. And I think that that, that helps if they've been exposed to one in the, in the school. I don't know. That's a personal opinion of mine. So this create a need for an additional officer. Uh, it, would be very beneficial. Um, we were kind of proactive with this. Uh, I added it in our budget. Hiring a 13th officer, but taking those wages and, and benefits at a low instead of a general fund. So I, I increased our low appropriation to make up for that. That doesn't come out of our general fund. Um, obviously, you guys will have to approve that when we have budget meetings, and then the board works will have to approve hiring a 13th officer. So, but I did. And, Mayor and I discussed that, and it was his idea to add that to our budget. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, but I mean, the <coughs> meeting and, and make our offer first and see what happens. And that's all we're going to do is just make an offer. Uh, hopefully, they accept it. But we'll okay. see. And where does that go then, Chief Shots? After you make the offer, uh, does it come back to it? Do we vote on something like that, or is that no? Simple? Okay. No. Um, it, it's up to the school board whether or not the school board and the superintendent whether or not they want to accept our offer, um, okay. and then any MOU that is entered into is between the school board and the superintendent, and then the board works. Okay. Is that correct, Andy? Thanks. So that's I just wanted to kind of give you. I, I know most of you probably read it in Saturday's paper, but. <clears throat> I wanted to give you a small presentation on, on what that's about and where we're going with that. Will we be asking them to contribute financially to that? Um, at this time, we're not. Um, we, we know it's kind of a, a last minute thing. I mean, we, we wanted to have a meeting early in June because the MOU, current MOU expires at the end of this month. Um, the, our meeting was around the 11th, I think, of June. Um, we, we, we didn't want to wait until the last minute and say, yeah, we're not going to do this anymore. So, we wanted to kind of be proactive, give them time to, to wrap their heads around and, and see what they can figure out and what we can figure out with the place. No, I did, did talk again, talking to a school board member in North Miami, their situation is they're getting some grant money for the, the office or the school is, and they're turning that grant money over to the uh, the sheriff's department. And it's, it's, it's a regular officer. They're just paying the regular and I don't know that our school has a grant, so money's coming for that. I don't we're know not asking do. for that. But if honestly, they, that's a discussion. If they do, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing, because where, where's the SRO now? Between all four schools? Yeah. So I wouldn't mind yeah. us paying for one. If it's in our budget, we approve it. It stays middle school, high school. And then if they want to, if they get grant money and want to pay for an officer, we add another one to the middle schools or to the elementary schools so or have them on a rotation. But it's Rochester. We're not far. We're not far from one thing or another, but a few minutes makes a difference. In that. When seconds count, minutes are, are yeah, are, are 
the world. But obviously, more than one would be ideal. One in each school would be awesome. Yeah. But Peru has three part-time officers. None of them are full-time, but they all have a part-time assignment. But as far as the, the the payment or the money contribution, or that's a conversation and an arrangement that's above my pay grade. Right so that's for <coughs> the mayor and you guys and the board works to decide how to decide that. Do you have enough money in your budget for two officers if that would happen then this year? For this year? This year, no. Okay. no. All I'm doing right now is reassigning an officer from patrol to SR. I'm just saying if you would hire two new officers or two new officers to replace Ostrom and Ed. Well, for this year, this year, no. Okay. Ostrom's leaving. Yeah, that's what okay. I'm getting to next. Um, okay. So we'll be accepting applications to replace him, but I, I added money in our low end. Oh, okay. okay. To hire a 13th officer, but that wouldn't take effect until January. Got the new budget. Anything else about that? Okay. And, and, and um, you know, it's not 100 percent assured that our offer would be accepted. No, that's right. Um, we're, we're getting out from under a left-handed situation. Oh, 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 do, do it that way. Um, you know, if they want to keep him on it as an administrative role, you know, um, just if they accept our offer and just want to, because I don't want to see anyone lose their job and I don't think anyone else does, but um, and I, I think there's a role that Skeeter could fill um, and a valuable role that he could play as far as security personnel or, or safety coordinator or whatever you want to call it, but um, that's really not up to me how they okay. proceed if they don't accept our offer. Right. You know, but I, there are other options out there. Okay. Um, and then next is Corporal Ostrom is, is resigning. He, and I, I've had this, I've known about this since he applied. Um, he received an offer from Escambia County, Florida. Um, him, him and his wife have wanted to move down to Florida for about four or five years. Um, timing is right for them, so he's accepted a position down there, um, and he'll be resigning effective uh, July 8th. Uh, he's one of our canine officers, and the board of works did agree to retire Aris, which is his canine dog. Um, the dog's been on the road five and a half years. He is nine years old, um, so there's really no value um, in retraining that dog. It's very expensive, and, and it doesn't make a lot of sense when you know, a dog's been been with one handler for five and a half years. Uh, at, at, at the age of the dog and the, uh, the years he's been working with this handler, yeah. it's a toss up as to whether it would stay a canning out, uh, the yeah. new handler. So we're going to retire the dog. Um, and again, when we come to budget time, I'll be talking to you guys about that. I put it next year's budget um, since this wasn't really planned. So I put it next year's budget, maybe we can hire, get a second dog next year. Um, and then the Board of Works did approve accepting applications, so that will be in the paper here shortly. We'll be accepting applications for the hire and replacement. And then, yeah, Chris Lease is also, I've got a department full of quitters right now. Um, Chris Lease <laughs> gave me her letter uh, of intent to wait for I know. I'm retirees. Retirees. Um, she's going to be retiring at the end of this year. So we went ahead and hired a replacement. She's going to start in July. How many years for Chris? 27 years with the city. So, and her, what, her mom was former clerk also? She was, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. She was their clerk for three terms, I believe. Yep. Uh, so we're going to get her replacement in there July 1 so Chris can train her for six months because Chris is my right hand when it comes to the department. When, when Chris does leave, uh, it's going to be hard, but I'll uh, need a smooth transition there. Um, and then the parade is Saturday. So that's you're all I've got. You're all in the parade, right? Everybody. Let me get back here on that. I said parade, not <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah, 
yeah, we're going to be getting the parades at 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll be shutting roads down at 9.30. Um, and then open it right back up. So that's all I have. I know I've long-winded tonight, but if you guys have any questions. Andy, what about police in the park? Um, no, hiatus right now. Uh, okay. We'll discuss that later. Okay. <coughs> that's all I have unless you guys have any questions. Any questions for the chief? Thank you, Chief. We'll have questions Thanks. as things roll out. Sure. Okay. Um, money? Huh? Money. What? Now everything's out of work. Yeah, Andy's sitting back here. It's like supposed that. to be me. She got out of work. It's like being in a hard work. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening, Lenny. Um, we've been not picking up uh, yard debris and bags. Uh, I apologize, uh, the bags have gone uh, untouched this week, but uh, we've been doing a lot of uh, other things that need to address, but we'll be out tomorrow getting in. Um, we got the park clean of fallen trees and limbs. Uh, we tore out the old concession stand, and I took the sweeper over there Wednesday and, and started sweeping it, and. Uh, Got that. And then I put Friday, but I didn't get to it Friday. But uh, we got it Monday morning before the, the park opened. Um, all big trees and logs and firewood. Uh, all but the big trees and firewood were able to get burned. Um, we are still giving away compost and loading it out. We've been through the town twice, chipping brush since the storm went through. Um, we'll be focused on the stump stump removal and fallen trees and uh, the alleyways yet to address. Um, we'll backfill them as we get them out, the stumps. Um, we started back mo uh, Monday sweeping the, the streets again as uh, we had a guy that was off for a, a month that runs a sweeper. That's all I have for the street. And um, out the park, we've been maintaining the bathrooms, um, uh, uh, eating fencings out there, fixing the uh, softball fence and the t-ball fence as we speak. Um, everything's mowed except for one spot off of uh, West 13th Street, as it was uh, soft with all the rain we've got, and you can't get anything down there to mow it without getting stuck. Ugly truck is in the park uh, removing trees. He, they got all the trees around Manitou Mountain. Um, they got two more to take down south of the uh, south of the park, so it's not really uh, in the way when they're working. Um, and the park reopened Monday. I, I should clarify: we're not removing all the trees around Manitou Mountain anyway. We, we're we're trimming some of the bad limbs and stuff there's some real hangers that needed to be opened up and we did take down some trees <coughs> that are uh, expert from the dnr oh uh, what he was here three weeks three ago weeks now ago, yeah. and <coughs> went through the park and some of the areas of town this fellow is one of two people in the state with the dnr who can evaluate a tree uh, there are a lot of arborists with the dnr but most of them are like forest experts uh, this gentleman had his little rod and he started with the root base of the tree and made the statement that he starts at the bottom and takes a look at the condition of the tree because if that's not good, you're wasting your time looking up any higher. And evaluated some of our 120 year old trees and there were a few we needed to get out of the park out there, which you've done a great job with the tree removal folks. They've, their effort's been really good. Yeah, thank you. I would invite some of you to go out and check out the Manitou Mountain area. It's probably the first time in a lot of years the sun's been able to get to yeah. Manitou Mountain. That's for sure. Yeah, but... Uh, That'll help on the mosquitoes. Well, that and security activity too, you know. Uh, but uh, everything's come along pretty good out there, as Lenny mentioned. Uh, Bill Rowe, Bill Rowe, Bill... Uh, Walsh. Walsh, thank you. 
Bill Walsh, he was in school with us too, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bill Walsh is uh, working on the uh, the electrical issues out there. He's going to get miles and miles of overhead wires. That a lot of them have come down with the storm, and uh, a lot of them are just bad situations, so he's putting everything back underground. Uh, we will have everything going, everything able to be used right now, except for the south end of the park, the, uh, the lights at the softball field and at the uh, bicycle ramp area, they're, they're not working yet, but everything is working right now, and uh, like I said, it's all going to be in, ending up, up going to be underground. Uh, I miss anything there? We've no, I just wanted to apologize to everybody about the park being closed so much, because I know it is a, um, a way of life for people, and they use that very much, And uh, but, you know, safety is a big factor, you know, you can't can't go in there when there's down wires or trees hanging up in the forks of another tree or it just just ain't right to send people in there to do that. I mean you gotta do your due diligence and get make sure it's safe for the public. You know, the trees that were down or almost down or everything, that all has to be addressed before you have people running around in there. Um, what do they call it? The insurance business a dangerous nuisance? Mm -hmm. And attractive we, nuisance. Yeah, attractive nuisance. We had uh, a lot of that. Lenny, uh, I just think you did a heck of a job in one month. It was a lot. Yeah, they, they had to work their butt off. Yeah, I was going to say, if you, you can apologize, but the work you guys have done has just been unbelievable. Yeah, I got, I got a pretty good group of guys in the house. That's for sure. Yeah, and it's been incredible for as much damage as there was. Thank you. Well, and uh, Lenny will agree, it was all hands on deck. Uh, yeah. And I was going to tell you too, you can still utilize some of uh, Lyle's personnel next week if you need some help with the bag pickup too. I wish I'd have known that. We had gotten them drafted again, but we had uh, golf course personnel, we had park personnel, we had waste treatment personnel, we had uh, the water department personnel. Everybody was involved in the cleanup, and uh, we still have certain jobs that they're still involved in. Um, that was the cleanup phase. This thing is going three phase. Next, and we're starting this next week, uh, the tree board, they've been involved. They have gone through the damaged areas of the town, street by street, address by address, giving us, have given us a list of what needs to be done at each location. Is the sidewalk torn up? Does that need to be addressed? And by the way, that is a conversation we'll have to have with the homeowners and their insurance company. You well know that fits into the homeowners category. Some of it. And then, uh, you know, the uh, stumps with the tree balls and stuff, there's a few of those that we've got to get removed and holes filled back in. And, uh, you know, then uh, any other debris issue that might be left at a residence, they've got it all outlined for us. They've got a nice list for us. So we've been through that and the work starts next week. And then after that's completed, the third phase will be include the tree board and our DNR expert with replanting where we need to replant. And of course the homeowner will be consulted in that too. If somebody doesn't want a tree there, we're not going to force a tree upon them. But our DNR expert is going to be involved because he says it is so crucial that you mix up the species. If you get crazy about one species, uh, one disease can come through and wipe out yeah. all your trees. So it, it's in three phases, and you're doing a good job with it. I appreciate it. Any questions for Lenny? Did we start burning those yet, or did we? Yeah, that's a, that's another thing. Uh, I want to thank uh, the Jackson excavating folks. They came out and dug a huge hole for us. Uh, we started the plant, and we've been burning since day one. We've got about <coughs> 30 days left on our emergency burn permit that. Uh, EPA folks issued to us, and I, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, we, we advertised that we had this permit to burn because I didn't want the neighbors saying, what the heck are they doing over there? And there was some confusion, even recently. Is that, yeah, that's yeah. what? The, 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 the permit is for the city, not for the citizens. It's not an open burning anywhere in the city. It's the location that's in the permit, which is out of the, the 
the uh, street burn, and it, it, it's pretty specific on, on how and when and what they can burn, and, and they've been doing a good job, but it, it's not an open free-for-all in the city. The, the, the IDM premier is for the, the city of Rochester, not the citizens of Rochester, and it's to be done out at the street barn under the supervision of Lenny. And, and IDM was great. They uh, issued, like I said, we got it right away, told the state, give it to us for 60 days. We need more time. Just call them. They would give us an extension. Uh, they said that's what those permits are for, for emergency situations like this. And we will need that in a little bit over 30 days. We're not 30 days into it, so we can continue to clean up and get it cleaned up. We also, uh, like I said, Jackson's, we needed to thank, but we also wanted to uh, call out and thank the uh, county because they allowed us to take some of the stuff <coughs> out behind their place. They had a permission for burning also, and uh, between the uh, the two locations we were able to dispose of an awful lot of material. Yeah, we help each other out quite a bit, me and John. Right, you and John work really well together. Yeah. But I'd also like to say uh, there's plenty of firewood too that out there for people. I mean, uh, as we've been burning, we kind of been trying to separate from the, the logs from the, the brush and get the brush first and then throw, we throw the logs off the one side so there's rather than burn it. I, useful leaves, the one to use it, there's plenty of it. Yeah. Might want to mention the hours we can um, there We're open like uh, 7 to 3.30, uh, Monday through Friday. Now, are they allowed to bring anything out there, the citizens? Um, they can, but uh, I'd like to know when they're coming, so I can just kind of keep an eye on so they can what contact they're, you if they what they're dumping, because we don't want no trash out yeah. there. we got to move from the, the town. Mm -hmm. we're not, we don't, well, well, our permit is only good for certain things, and we need to make sure that I'm that's just thinking like, yeah. yeah, trees or something. Yeah. 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 And everybody's always, they have always called the city hall and they refer them to me, and so I can, you know, make sure they're not trying to burn mattresses or couch or <coughs> whatever yeah. else might be burning out there. Well, and that's the uh, quickest way to lose your permit right there. You'd be done. So yeah, we absolutely. have to monitor that pretty closely. Uh, this also would like to thank Bill Morris because he helped a lot in the effort. So the ground was wet, he came out there and got some of the bigger wood in the park and uh, cut down a tree for us too. So he kind of stacked up the brush for us and made it a lot easier because we would have took our loader out there and would have been uh, cutting some ruts in there. We would be uh, fixing some problems rather than one. Yeah, Billy did a nice job for us. Even in, uh, he did it. Uh, for the trees and took them out of there. My gosh, it looked like a pike lumber truck going out of there at different times. It, uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of and stuff. And it definitely helped in the efforts of us when we came there because everything was in a nice, neat, orderly fashion and we just, you know, addressed the piles as we see them. If uh, none of you have ever seen a, a hundred year old maple tree that the ants have been working on, it's pretty awesome. We're a lot of hollow. Oh, the trees yeah. that fell. Yeah. So our DNR expert was uh, a welcome sight. Yeah, he's, very, he's very knowledgeable guy. Nice. He's, uh, Anything else for Lenny? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Randy. list of items that needed to be completed so we can close out the project and also while we was out there we're going to install a soak away out by the dentist office because we got water ponding and uh, this will pretty much take care of that issue. We have a meeting tomorrow with Commonwealth engineers to negotiate the cost and fees for the federal highway grant we got for sidewalks in town. And then as far as the 50-50 sidewalk, the first eight have been completed. We got eight more, but we got to evaluate what kind of uh, cost and what's left in the budget as far as whether we can do any of them. And well, we'll be able to do some, but I'm not sure. We pretty well hit the, uh, the budgeted monies for the, the 
50 50 pretty hard. You may have to wait until next year to do, do the ones that are in the queue. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, then I don't want any old brush in. I've been starting turning compost in. Yeah. For the uneducated like me, Randy, what, what is a soak away? It would be a, uh, you can bury a 20, 24 inch tile, stand it on in, and the water will run to it and then soak into the ground. Okay. It has holes in it. Yeah. Okay. Gravel. Dry. Uh, dry well. French, <coughs> French drain. Yeah. You know what a French drain is? It's not really a French drain. We. Oui. <laughs> Oui, monsieur. Welcome to the educational channel, ladies and gentlemen. Anything else for Randy? And I saw you put one on a country club, too. <laughs> Works good, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> it was new. Now, that was a French dream. <laughs> Because there were Frenchmen with parades there, too. <laughs> because I watched them. Anything else for Randy? Thanks, Randy. And then Marcus is not here, and Derek's on vacation. Yeah, you know what? We just, we just hit it, John. We just hit it. I, I uh, Harry's not here this evening. Uh, David's not here. Gary, how about Area Planning Commission? Well, this is going to probably be a little bit of a shock to you, but I have nothing to report. <laughs> <laughs> However, I um, did request numbers. Uh, Casey's on vacation, and I'll give you the permit numbers the next week. Okay. Uh, thank you. Okay, Fedco met June 6th. Um, we have been reinstated retroactively for 501c3 status. I uh, finally got that news. We've been working on that for a little while. Uh, we're getting ready to look over the 2020 budget. Uh, Tara and I worked on that and we'll be presenting it to the executive committee pretty soon. Um, <clears throat> The Ag strategy we've been talking about, Jim Shaw and Terry met with Connie Neininger of the Indiana State Department of Agriculture to review their data and what they're encouraging communities to do. They also met with Mark Kepler and reviewed the information. After those meetings, they decided to reach out to economic development directors in the five surrounding counties to ask them about their Ag strategy and see if there were any opportunities for, for us to work together. Um, youth Center. The youth center um, has about, at, at the time of our meeting, had forty-five thousand dollars of the fifty they needed to get to get started. Um, we had a couple of local companies step up and commit to ten thousand a year for three years. Uh, Rochester Homes, the county commissioners, Optimus Club, all committed five thousand a year for three years. Um, after. The article ran in the paper. TCU Advanced Magnetics both reached out to Terry to get information um, about possibly donating as well. They were still waiting to hear from, they were scheduled to present to the Kiwanis Club. Um, yeah, like I said, this meeting was on the 6th. <laughs> that happened last week. Okay. Um, Did they get some money? No. Okay. But we haven't met on I see. So they're, they're, as of this meeting, they were five thousand dollars from their goal with companies and other community and other uh, organizations lining up to um, help help uh, help out financially. So that that's off and running. And they will be posting. They're advertising the job for the director, um, and they were planning on starting that on the 10th. Um, they saw the re their board had to review it, and they were planning on advertising on the 10th for the director position. 
Did, you, did you happen to mention where they're planning on uh, their facility, where they're planning on uh, operating the home? Uh, I don't know that it was finalized, but I know they were really looking hard at the former Fastenal building. Um, they were also looking at, they were going to look in other areas again at the time of that meeting. That, that other area fell through. They're, they're concentrating on Fastenal. The Fastenal building. Which I think is nice. It's right on Main Street. Yeah, and that, that's the, the big thing. It's easily accessible to the kids. Um, the Miami County Job Fair um, was tonight um, and Wednesday. And that was the result of the Schneider Electric closing out. You know, a, lot of, a lot of displaced workers, so we're holding that um, job fair. The theater was working with the South Bend Cubs to have a Rochester theater night where every ticket sold would benefit the theater. Um, to some degree, not, not totally. But. Wings, etc. is planned to break ground. Um, it was six to eight weeks. Um, two weeks before this meeting. So, <laughs> do that now. Uh, well, Terry also reached out had a meeting with the realtor from that deal to see if they had any ties to any hotels that might want to locate in the area. Um, Fulton County Airport, King Aero Aviation Services plans to occupy the spec hangar that is being built out there at the airport. And then from our round table, it's pretty much the same news. Most of the local businesses are doing quite well still. Um, the economy's still pretty, pretty well, rolling pretty well in this area. And that is what I have to report. Okay. <coughs> Any questions for Ryan? Okay. Uh, the Development Commission <coughs> did have a meeting uh, last month. And uh, again, yeah, wings, et cetera, they're about 30 days away from breaking ground. Um, the project on the uh, table for the Redevelopment Commission we've been looking at getting some information regarding uh, the, uh, the completion of the uh, street out on Apache Drive in the uh, in the mall area in front of uh, Schnabel Tiers that would go clear to 14, uh, include uh, sidewalks and drainage and also some uh, utilities. Uh, we have a lift station there, we're taking a look at uh, be involved to a beef at lift station up where uh, wish markets were here right now. We're about 70% capacity for that lift station. That would be uh, a lift station that would service the new jail also. That uh, So we're taking a hard look at that to see what we, we need to do out there. But all that's sitting on the table of uh, the redevelopment commission right now. We have had some engineering folks take a look at some preliminary figures, all that will cost. We'll be reviewing that at our uh, next month's meeting. And that's pretty much Is there an estimated time from groundbreaking to opening on uh, wings? Do, do we know about what that time frame is? <coughs> I made the comment, I think I got this number right. Right now, they have 90 of these that are being built across the United States. 90? 90. Yeah, so they, they do this <laughs> pretty much like popping popcorn. Uh, I think they don't know what they're they're all about. And then once they start breaking ground, it'll probably be very quick. Look how fast pilot went. Yeah, look how yeah. pilot went. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I think you'll yeah. you'll be eating wings before the summer's over, I'm sure, Marty. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Park Board Mason. Park Board met on the tenth. Lori said the pool, there were some mechanical issues with a few of the pumps that they were currently working on. Other than that, everything was going fine. Lenny gave his report. I don't have anything to add to that. Great job. <laughs> and uh, Lyle said the revenue, I don't have the numbers with me, but the revenue is down on uh, the golf course from the past three years. However, it's been raining every weekend, so that was expected. It's still up over, I think, 14. 13 or 14, I think that's as far back as the numbers go. But we're not far behind. He thinks some good weather will catch back up. 
during the storms, he said they lost 20 to 30 trees, um, but they did get opened back up from Memorial Day weekend, so that was good. And as you hinted at earlier, some of his staff have been helping the parks with um, some bag cleanup. And I think any questions, that's all I have. I think they did a really good job too, didn't they? Like yeah. Working with us, that's good workers and very respectable young men. Any questions for Mason? Okay, uh, Rochester BZA and Council on Aging, uh, Marty. Yes, sir. BZA uh, has no meeting tomorrow, canceled or no activity. And unfortunately, as previously reported, I was unable to attend yesterday's Council on Aging, and I do not have any information uh, to report there. Okay. Any questions for Council on Aging? <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to handle them this time. That was your vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that's what it would have been. <laughs> okay. Uh, solid Waste and Animal Adoption Center, Chase? <clears throat> Nothing for animal adoption. Um, solid waste. Since the last board meeting, the recycling center shipped 74 tons of recyclables with a value of $4,308.85 for the month of April 2019. <clears throat> the county line landfill received 45,590 tons of waste in 24 working days for a daily average of 1,900 tons per day. Fulton County accounted for 5,816 tons. The rest of Indiana contributed 39,745 tons. There was 28 tons of out-of-state trash collected. The district coast fee for the month was $61,120.67. And the county coast fee for the month of April 2019 was $19,886.88. Um, since the last board meeting, they've sold 287 dollars bags. Bring that total to 6,636 um, of the orange bags. 3,286 were purchased by city residents and 3,368 were purchased by county residents. Now that's a total for the four years for the project, that, right? Since it started, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, and they've so far they've collected $3,868 for disposal of bulk items since they started that as well. Um, they ordered a couple of new signs for out front uh, with orange lettering. Uh, she went in and ordered those from Chad Lewis. And then they got their new truck that they ordered from Rochester Ford. It's a one ton. And um, they're starting to utilize that. Have had a little problems with uh, trash in the trailer and the um, recycling trailers again, like over on our chapter marks. So Stacy's going to try to figure out what to do about that. Might have to pull it for a little while and put it back or something. So. <coughs> Can't you monitor that? Marty. Yeah. Marty, that's in your neighborhood. I, I could try to, yeah. You want me to put that on my schedule? Thank you. Okay. Can we put the trailer at your house? There you go. <laughs> that make it easier yeah. for you to monitor. It would. <laughs> <watch. laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it's used a lot. Too. Yeah, it is used a lot. Yeah. The um, you know the 19,000 uh, uh, county host income there. How much of that goes to the solid waste folks? Any idea? So the county host fee that they get, they get the whole 19,000. They get the whole 19,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions for Chase? Thank you. Chase, uh, tree board and EMS, but Ryan's not here tonight. John, the water board? Yes, sir. The best thing of it is when Jerry starts it out, <coughs> with the plan of operation updates, everything is operating as normal. Everybody like hear that. New directional flushing will uh, take place starting on July 8th and continue for 30 days, so watch for discolored water. It won't hurt you, but it won't look good either in your coffee in the morning. Uh, meter testing will begin as soon as Emmy Simpson schedules us to start. Old business. Uh, the mayor informed the board 
at the City Council review and pass resolution 02-2019, resolution concerning deceased customers. Update was uh, presented to Derek to the board for employees taking vacation for the month. Imagine that. Randy Carr and Derek. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Sorry, Derek, I had to do that even though you're not here. <laughs> Always pick on like that. We should. But that was uh, really about everything that he had on his one list to me. And then the report that he would have given was that the red meters, orders repaired or replaced bad meters, locates, sweep them up, backwash filler beds, <laughs> loads swept off the plant. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What I miss? We can, we can do that for you. We can do it for you. We're used to hearing that. <laughs> oh, go ahead. No, it's all right. <laughs> Please. But everybody has this one. I was trying to help out the TV crowd. My head. <laughs> it's kind of like me with Chip and Bryce. Okay. There's call outs. Well, we'll just go down to the uh, call outs. Joe Murray was called out at 5 16 19. It's at 15 p.m. at the 1309 Lakeview Bend for the uh, meter leaking. Meter was repaired. John Lattermick was called out at 5, 14, 19 at 3, 40 p.m. to 1306 Dogwood for not having any water due to the wrong curb stop being turned off. Uh, water was turned back on at the curb stop. I think I remember that one. Randy, Randy Carr was called out for an emergency locate for a broken utility pole. Randy Carr was called out uh, for, at uh, 5, 24, 19 to 807 Dogwood Drive for an emergency locate for a broken utility pole. Randy Carr was called out. 52619. At least that's not another broken utility pole. Uh, at 1502 Jefferson Street, for an emergency locate for a broken utility pole. It was too. He hit it on me. <laughs> and uh, any other questions for anybody? Let me know. That uh, is one of your best reports. It's like only Derek wasn't here, and I went through that pretty quick. Well, uh, will there be a schedule published, like in the paper form, that discolored water thing? Yes, they, the they always do that, let them know when the unidirectional flushing is going on. <coughs> they always put that in the paper. Yeah, yeah, till, and everybody's had that in the morning. You have the morning, you make your coffee water, you go, woo. It, it won't hurt you. It really won't. It really won't hurt you. It's just the fact that it doesn't look too good. Marty, I can answer that. I've already sent the press release out to everybody because Derek wanted it sent out at least 30 days ahead. Or yeah, uh, yeah. two weeks, not 30. Uh, I think it was 15 or 20 days ahead of time. So we've already sent that out and it will last for 30 days, the flushing well. So uh, he just found out that there is going to be a slight delay in the start time, so it might not be right on the 8th. Is it because um, it's on vacation? <laughs> 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 and, and, uh, weather, weather has something to do with Weather does. Weather uh, has and I, I, I'm not sure with that, why weather has for this flushing. So anyway, so yeah, it'll last for about 30 days, so once they start it, and it will go through that 30-day period, um, We've asked the media to just kind of carry out and throw it in, like for the Sentinel, talk to the town, reminder, you know, we're going to put it on the water bills. So we'll get the communication out there as best we can. I'll get it posted on the website as well. So they'll know. And that happens every place in town yes. in that 30 yeah. days. Some, some will be. You'll, you'll sure know some rest, rest in different areas, you know. Check the water before you do your whites. Yeah, that's right. I wouldn't throw that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Shada. Yes. About the sewer, yep. too. About the flushing that they're doing. Oh, because yes. they're causing this colored water. Now. Yes, that's, that's a good that, idea. That's um, being posted also. Well, yeah, we've got that. Well, I just got that press, press release done and sent out. Uh, there's also going to be the sewage department is going through and, and cleaning their lines. And in the process of doing that, they're opening up the hydrants. So because they're opening up the hydrants, it's causing some discolored water, kind of the same thing. There's some discolored water, uh, potentially some low but That has nothing to do with the sewage. So. No, it's just, no, it's let's, no. Let's make that perfectly clear. It has nothing to do with the sewage, right. but what it is right. is because when the guys flush it, they need, they need the water from the hydrants in order to um, hydro yeah. support yeah. the yeah. truck. Yeah. Well, and too, with, right? the, uh, and with the cleaning and that's going on, you may, you may have a, a, a sense of some sewer gas in the area yes. while it's going yes. on, and that's that's all perfectly normal. So. Yes. And that press release went out today. Yeah. And that goes on now. But the but the key thing John said there is that little brown water it, it's perfectly safe. It's just a little rust. That's all. Any questions for John? Boy, I'll tell you, I felt like I was at the water board meeting. You did a great.
you got. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got a question for you? Okay. Um, what is Thank you very much. Uh, any ADA concerns that aren't listed that have come up? Nothing that. Uh, we've taken care. We've had one report, and we submitted a letter to the property owner. Um, there was a bush impeding the sidewalk, so we just sent a letter out. I think we had a bush growing out over a sidewalk. Tough situation. So we've uh, addressed that. And that's about it. Was that on Arthur Street? No. Okay. No. We don't have <laughs> that would be a trailer because Marty's going to move the recycling trailer so we can monitor it. Okay. <laughs> any um, any legal issues, uh, lawyer Perkins? Nothing to report. Okay. Okay. Well, with that being the case, I would entertain a motion, motion to adjourn. Wow, Moved by Goodman, seconded by Thompson. Those in favor? We're adjourned.